Hey, it's Trybear. And today I'm gonna walk you through everything that you need to know to get started in Lies of P. We'll go through all of the basic mechanics, the things that make Lies of P different and stand out from its competitors, and everything in between. This game was a huge surprise for me. I went into it thinking it was just gonna be another clone. It's actually fantastic, and I cannot recommend it enough. If you're a fan of the Souls-like genre or any of those style of games, this one is easily up there with one of the best. If any additional questions or comments for me, I'd be happy to talk to you on my live stream. I'm live every single day on twitch.tv forward slash drybear. And we'll start with two very important questions that get frequently asked, a frequently asked question section. And the two that get asked all the time is first, is there any multiplayer? And the answer is no. At the making of this video, there is no multiplayer or co-op availability or online availability for Lies of P at this moment. And the next question is, if I don't like my build, can I respec it like in other Souls games? And the answer is yes, you can, but unfortunately you have to complete Act 7 in order to unlock that availability. It's at the Saintus of Mercy statue once you finish all of Act 7 and defeat the boss there. Next, let's quickly cover stats and builds so you know what you're getting yourself into. When you first start the game, you're going to walk in to the first bench in front of you when you spawn, and it's gonna ask you, select a combat style, either Path of the Bastard, Path of the Sweeper, or Path of the Cricket. And two of these are pretty straightforward. There is three main stats in the game. And those stats are Motivity, Technique, and Advance. Motivity is simply just strength. You'll be focusing on very heavy weapons that are slower, but hit really hard, and you'll also get a little bit of defense from it as well. The Technique stat is basically just a dexterity from other games. You'll be a little bit faster and pokier, and you'll have more nimble movement and fable arts with that, and you'll be able to use those kind of high dexterity weapons. The third stat is a little bit of a wild card because it's quite different than something you've experienced before. This stat is called Advanced, and this is not what this would suggest. When I first read Path of the Cricket Balance, I was like, hmm, that might be... Maybe that's like a mix of strength and dexterity. It's actually not. As you go further into the game, advance is actually an elemental attack stat. So you'll be getting elemental weapons that are coated in acid, that are lit on fire, that have electricity on them. And scaling your advanced stat will scale up your elemental damage with those types of weapons. And that is a whole build style in using those in the game. The other three stats are very straightforward. Capacity increases your carrying capacity so you can have heavier stuff without slowing yourself down. Vigor gives you stamina and vitality gives you HP. Weapons in Lies of P have durability. You'll see that down below my camera in the bottom right. There is that bar that shows in the bottom right that shows the durability of the weapon. You can see that as I use the weapon, the durability is going down. Now, generally I am against using durability as a mechanic in most games, because I find it kind of lame, but in this case, it's actually not that bad. So how would this work? How this works is your damage is higher the higher your durability is, kind of like Monster Hunter sharpening your weapon. And when your durability gets too low, eventually your weapon will start bouncing off of targets like in Monster Hunter. However, you come with base kit, a weapon durability grinder, where you can sharpen your weapon until it's maximum durability, and then you can use that to get different benefits. When you're specking your character, you'll be able to spec into getting more damage when you have high durability. And honestly, there's the weapons can break in combat, which means that you have to go back to a Stargazer, which is your Bonfire or Grace that you'd use in this case. And you'll get the weapon back. It's just a punishment for not managing your durability overall. There are consumables that you can use to instantly fill your durability. And there's also special grinders that you can activate that will give your weapon a special element or imbue it with some kind of stat like improved guard after using the grinder. All weapons except for boss weapons in this game are split into two pieces, the top of the weapon and then the hilt or the base of the weapon. And these are split and do different things. And you can actually break them apart and reassemble them to make whatever weapon that you want. Now I have a whole guide going over all weapons and how to make them and what to look for when you're making the weapons. But for this video, let's talk about the very basics of how this system works. Firstly, the damage and the damage type come from the top of the weapon. So in the case of a sword, the blade will give you its damage and damage type. You can also take an elemental blade type and put it on a base handle that has elemental on it and then give that weapon an elemental damage output. Typically, your backstabs and your flourishes and finishes come from the top of the weapon as well. However, the handle is what gives you your stat scaling. The damage comes from the top of the weapon, but the scaling for the weapon comes from the handle. So you can get a very nice head 
like a, a, a acidic head or a basic head or a heavy head that you like. And then you can use a handle that scales the stat that you're using for. And the move set for the weapon does come from the handle as well, which means the basic attack, the light and heavy attack, the combo attack, all of those come from the handle. So your move set is determined by your handle and your finishers as well as your damage type come from the top of the weapon. However, there are boss weapons that are complete kits. You can't separate them. They come as a single weapon with a single piece and you can't separate them or do anything separate from that. Additionally, you have your weapon arts in this game, kind of like Bloodborne, where you can activate uh, your resource to activate a special attack based on the weapon. And the head and the handle both have their own weapon art. So you can mix and match them together to have two different ones based on the head that you have and the, the base handle of the weapon that you have. And again, in the case of boss weapons, since they can't be separated, they just come with a fixed two different fable arts that you can use with that weapon specifically that you will use as part of the boss weapon and you can't change them. These generally have a pretty wide set usage of them. They have tons of different abilities and weapon arts. Some are buffs, some are parries, some are guards, some are you can absorb a hit with a heavy weapon, some are crazy combinations that do big damage or big stagger. All of that is in the game and you can mix and match them to your heart's content. As far as upgrading goes, there's nothing novel here. You'll be using items that you find, your consumables that you find in the world to upgrade your weapon. You'll need higher level uh, materials to make your weapon stronger. And when you're upgrading a weapon, you upgrade the head to increase the damage that it deals. And there's ways to alter the handle as well to alter the scaling. You can increase the dexterity scaling, the strength scaling, and of course, the elemental scaling on the weapon itself which is motivity, technique, and advance. And don't worry, you can still use the altar handle on the boss weapons, even though they can't be separated, so you can still alter their scaling as well. Now let's get into combat, which has a couple new mechanics that you may not be used to that are worth knowing about. First of all, when you take damage, you'll see that the HP goes down. That's a no-brainer there. And you can, just like other games, you can guard and block. However, there's a guard regain mechanic in this game that you'll notice that when you are blocking, if you successfully block an attack, you take chip damage, and then part of your HP bar is now kind of this dull orange brown color. That is your guard regain. And what that means is that when you successfully guard an attack, if you land damage on an enemy, you will regain that HP just by being aggressive. You can see that when I take, when I guard and then I lose a little bit of HP, if I attack, I gain that HP back. However, this does go both ways. When you damage an enemy, they will also gain some guard regain, and this works on bosses as well. And so if you deal damage to an enemy, they will start to regenerate health after a little while, uh, get their HP back. So the game definitely rewards you for being aggressive and being able to stay on the enemy, and they will be staying on you as well. You'll recover your HP lost with pulse cells. These are the consumables that you'll get, and you can use these up to heal your character. And when what's cool is when you get down to zero, so we'll use all my pulse cells here, you'll see I have zero pulse cells. I'll actually start regenerating an extra charge on that. When you are at zero, and only when you're at zero pulse cells, as you attack enemies, you can see that that bar on the left side where my pulse cells are is filling up. And I even have a buff right now that, that has that passively fill up as well. And so when I actually get to the point where that fills up, I will gain a free heal now that I have one charge. But again, because it only fills up at zero, when I hit to one, it's going to stop refilling and I can use this one and then it'll start refilling again. And so even though you're out of heals in combat, you are not completely out of it. As long as you're being aggressive and getting into the fight and dealing damage, you will be able to get your healing back in order to stay in the fight and keep going. So it's not over just because you ran out of pulse cells. And by the way, there is a very loud, audible tink sound that plays when you do get that charge back. You just heard it there. So pay attention to that when you're playing because that will tell you that you just refilled one of your heals. Now there's a very cool mechanic in this game called Perfect Guard. It kind of reminds me of Sekiro and being able to meet an enemy's attack directly with your blade. If you activate your guard at the exact moment that an enemy hits you, it will activate a perfect guard, which means you will take no chip damage from guarding. You will take no stamina reduction, a little bit of stamina reduction less than if you had guarded. And it also will have the chance of dealing durability damage to the enemy's weapon. And this is awesome because this game does have its version of unblockable attacks. They're called fury attacks and the enemy will glow red and then launch towards you to do a fury attack. And this, if you're blocking, you will take full damage, usually get knocked back and take a bunch of damage there. But you, as you can see in that moment, if you perfect guard the unblockable attack, 
you'll take no damage and it's a free parry. You'll also notice that if you get perfect guards on enemies, if their weapon can be destroyed, their weapon will glow like a white hot when you land a perfect guard. And if you do that enough and do enough durability damage to their weapon, it will snap and break, which afterwards will greatly reduce their damage output on their attacks. It will reduce the range of their attacks as well. They won't have the same reach anymore. And it basically effectively neutralizes them as an offensive target because their weapon has been completely broken. And by the way, half the bosses in the game have a weapon that can be broken through perfect guards as well. So you can see it there, it's lighting up red hot, showing that that weapon can be broken if you get enough durability damage on it. You can even increase this with acid effects as well, which does have a damage to durability effect. Ergo is the currency of the game. It is the blue number in the top right corner. And when you die, you will drop a corpse of all your Ergo contained on that corpse when you are perished and you go back to your Stargazers and have to go fight back to it. It does tell you how much your corpse has on it in the top right, but just note that as you take damage on the way there, it will reduce the amount that's on that corpse, but there are consumables that can reduce this effect. Next unique mechanic is the Legion Arm, and these are mechanized robotic arms that you can use as part of your build. And they themselves do have stat scaling, as you can see. The elemental ones will scale better with advance. The heavier ones will scale better with motivity. And of course, the more dexterous ones will scale better with technique. And these can be leveled up as well, as you can see here, as you put more materials into upgrading these arms, they unlock new versions of their abilities and different benefits that work really well with them. You have arms that can pull enemies to you or pull you to enemies, arms that deal lightning damage, fire damage, can place down worm stanks like you'd see in Monster Hunter. You can do acid, you can even do guards with giant shields or even shoot a gun. In the bottom right, you'll see your Legion meter, which you can fill up with consumables or by resting, and this is how you use up your Legion weapon. So if you use the one that pulls, you use a little bit of that meter, and then once it's drained, you won't be able to use your Legion arm anymore, but of course you can upgrade this and spec into it if you really want to uh, increase the value of that. And there's different elements and uh, amulets and gear options that go into your Legion arm as well. Even though there's currently no multiplayer in the game, you can still summon summons for boss fights using these pedestals that you find in front of a boss fight here. It does require a currency item, the Star Fragment. And when you activate this, when you you will activate this and step into the boss arena, and when you do so, a specter will summon with you. And what's cool about this, it's an AI that you can buff and use consumables on and things like that, but typically, if the boss you're fighting has a boss weapon that you can unlock later, the specter will be carrying it, which is kind of a nice flavor thing. So when you summon the specter, you can see if there is a boss weapon, a weapon you haven't seen before. So you can look at that and see that they're carrying it. And you can see it in action when the specter is fighting the boss with you. Important items to be aware of are the pulse cells for healing, which is super important. You want to have your grinder equipped at all times to keep the durability up on your weapon. The monad's lamp you start the game with, and this will help you identify secret items and things like that, and it has the uh, cricket talk to you, which is part of the story element. You'll later unlock the cube, which is a consumable box that you can use to get benefits from it, things like buffing your damage or buffing your summons damage or healing your summon, things like that. Of course, you have a dark sign that you can return back to base if you really want to, and then you also have a moon phase pocket watch, which allows you to teleport to a stargazer or to the base camp, your main firekeeper area, for free without any possible downside. I would recommend taking advantage of throwing objects if you're running into trouble or the difficulty spiking too high for you, as throwables in this game are actually busted compared to other competitor titles, as they gen generally do a ridiculous amount of damage. You will get Ergo Fragments, which will give you Ergo, the currency in the game that you can activate to use at level up or at a vendor. And keep in mind that you will get special rare ergo from bosses and those can be traded in to get special boss weapons or boss amulets as well. When it comes to gear, it's all pretty straightforward. You have your main hand weapon and your offhand weapon. When you have two weapons equipped, you can swap between them by using the right analog or on PC, I believe you can just press a separate button for that. And you can easily just swap between these. The only caution I'll give you with having two weapons equipped is both of their weights will be applied to your character simultaneously regardless of whether you have one out or not, you'll still have that weight applied to your character. So keep that in mind for the weight limit that goes along with that. You have amulets and you can actually expand the amulet slots that you have through character progression. And all these have different benefits as well. And you also have your defensive parts, which give you your defensive options. Your main option is your frame. This usually gives your physical damage and it's like wearing armor, essentially. Your converter will give you elemental reduction and defense in that front. 
Your cartridge can give you special resistance to status effects and things like that, or other physical damage increases there as well. And lastly, your liner gives you damage reduction to a specific type of damage slash strike or pierce. So if you know you're going up against a specific boss, you can use a specific liner inside of your character to keep yourself resistant to that type of damage. Aside from your stats and your gear level ups, you still have another alternate progression path, which is your P organ, which is essentially your puppet heart as a mechanized creature. You'll be able to come to this chair inside the hotel once you have unlocked it and be able to use quartz that you find out in the world to upgrade your character in different ways. And there's a couple things to know about this at first. Firstly, when you look at an empty slot like this, you can see that there's three empty slots inside of this in order to activate the passive benefit. Although, when you go here and you activate one of these slots, the slot itself will gain its benefit immediately. You need to fill all the slots out in order to gain the benefit that's listed at the top, which is the synergy bonus of that specific node. And you can go back and do the cheaper ones down here if you want it as well. And to unlock the next phase, you just need to fill up all these bars in between. So you can see there's two bars in between each one. So you need to fill out two full nodes in order to completely unlock the next phase, which gives you another set of benefits that you can find. Things like adding an additional amulet slot, things like dodging out of the ground when you are uh, on the ground, you can dodge out of being knocked down. You can increase the stagger window. You can dodge multiple times. You can add more fable, which is your weapon art uh, combination for your character. And when you go to put into these empty slots, these don't have any like restricted currency. You just use quartz to activate one of these benefits. And the further along you go, the more benefits you'll unlock. So on the right side of the screen here, you'll see these listed out. There's attack type, survival type, ability type and item type. And put simply, you'll activate one quartz to activate one of these benefits. You'll get it immediately as long as it's slotted into a specific slot. And you'll put it into the slot you have selected and you can choose from each type, but you can't have more than one of each type inside a single node. So if you decide to select an attack type inside a node, it won't let you use another attack type in that. You do have to mix and match. As you can see, when I look around here, all of these have different colors or the items that are slotted in there for those buffs. And you'll just get progress further and further along. You can get all the way to phase five very easily. And you'll find quartz throughout the game by completing objectives, opening chests, and defeating unique enemies. Lastly, let's talk about another unique mechanic, the gold coin tree. This is essentially a Farmville installation in your game. And out on a set timer, it will start generating this gold coin fruit, which you use for different things like respecting your character or buying consumables or as part of the story, which I won't spoil for you. So this one just kind of grows and you have to collect it. And it only works while the game is open. So if you're trying to find more of these, if you end up respecting a lot and you need a lot of gold coin fruit, just leave this open. You can collect as much of this as you want. And you can also buy boosters at alchemists and vendors, especially inside the hotel, that increase the rate at which these generate. But it is a unique mechanic you need to be aware of. And that's all the basics for Lies of P. This game completely surprised me with how awesome it is. If you're a fan of the Souls-like genre, I do recommend it. It is a lot of fun. If you found value in this video, leave a like down below. Leave a comment for the algorithm to help this video get seen by more people. And I'll see you on my live stream. If you enjoyed yourself today, leave a like down below. You can support me and my work on Patreon and view Patreon exclusive content. Link in the description. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.